What is up, everybody? It's your girl, Diamond, or Jaded Reads here. Um, back to introduce another reading vlog. So, first of all, I just want to say, if this is your first time seeing my face or knowing of my existence, my name is Diamond, aka Jaded Reads. And on this channel, I like to do reading vlogs, book reviews, and everything in between. So, if you like that type of stuff, or if you like my personality, maybe you should consider subscribing. All right, so get back to it I'm actually at work <laughs> oh, I'm coming down off of an emotional high because today was our second quarter honors assembly and my daughter did make honors she made honor roll and she had citizenship and she was also the golden apple winner so I'm really it was a dual um, it was dual excitement because I'm her teacher and I'm very proud of her and I'm also her mother and I'm extremely proud of her so I cried, child, giving my speech. It was just a lot. So I'm coming off of that. I'm on a little break and I want to go ahead and introduce the reading vlog for today. I'm not sure, but I think this is definitely gonna go up. Yeah, this is gonna be in February because it, we're just a few days away. So today is Friday, January 26th and there's two vlogs ahead of this one. But even though it's 26, I want to go ahead and start off and kick off my Black History Month reading. So we are reading Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God, and I've already began it. I'm only I'm only six pages in, but I gotta tell you guys, the dialect in here, the, colloqu the colloquialism that's being used in this novel, I'm already excited. It's gonna be a quick read, I already know. So I've been savoring, and I'm like, girl, mm -mm, just save it for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because this is gonna be so entertaining. I'm excited about it. The way that the characters are already talking and speaking is just so familiar to me. And there's nothing like reading a story that's familiar to you and where you come from and the behaviors and mannerisms of everyone around you. It's a different type of feeling and experience that you're gonna like receive. So I just want to come and introduce it and talk about the book for a moment. Even though this is in my books that I'm going to read for Black History Month, I'm not sure whoever's watching this has tuned into that. So this book is by Zora Neale Hurston, one of the writers of the Harlem Renaissance. This book was published in 1931, I think, or 37. Hold on. Yep. Actually, it's 1937. And Zora Neale Hurston is African-American, a phenomenal writer. Her canon is vast, for sure. She has several novels children's books as well and uh this is going to be the first one for me and i'm just really excited about it so this book is about janie janie is a black woman however she's fair-skinned uh there's still a lot of issues within the black community as it relates to colorism and so i'm just interested to see the portrait of janie in this novel and how that's depicted as well as the loves of her lives i think that she has been married either two or three times and it's going to take you through the highs and lows of her marriages and how her community perceives her um for that and what she goes through emotionally and how she I think still wants to strive for that great love and she's not put down on the fact that her relationships are not working out. Um, I think it's also going to be um, just about life and how life is being depicted throughout this specific time in history. So I'll go ahead and read the jacket just for those of you who like to hear that. Uh, it says here, one of the most important works of 20th century American literature, Zora Neale Hurston's beloved 1937 classic, Their Eyes Were Watching God, is an enduring Southern love, love, Southern love story, sparkling with wit, beauty, and heartfelt wisdom, told in the captivating voice of a woman who refuses to live in sorrow, bitterness, fear, or foolish romantic dreams. It is the story of the fair-skinned, fiercely independent Janie Crawford and her evolving selfhood through three marriages, three instead of two through three marriages and a life marked by poverty, poverty, trials, and purpose. A true literary wonder, Hurston's masterwork remains as relevant and affecting today as when it was first published, perhaps the most widely read and highly regarded novel in the entire canon of African-American literature. Um, and this is a picture of Zora. Beautiful woman. So yeah, I'm excited about this and I can't wait to update you guys as we go. So I just wanted to introduce it. I don't have much to say right now. I just wanna just like sit here and just collect myself. I feel really good. 
but I just I'm really emotional right now so um yeah so I'll talk to you guys soon see you in the next clip Nick see you in the next clip I wanted to come in and share my initial thoughts about their eyes were watching God by Zora Neale Hurston I'm on chapter eight and I'm loving this. Like when I tell you, my lips are probably dry because I have wet face. Um, so ooh, I hope it's not too hot. I have to let it cool off a little bit. Um, so girl, this book is so funny. I mean, it's not meant, it is meant to be. Zora was meant to make you laugh in the midst of making you feel something. So we're following Janie. Janie is a biracial girl in the early 19th century. Um, she is from, I don't even know where they're situated. It don't even talk, I think these are like mythical towns that they're talking about. We don't even, I don't even know where she's from, but let's just say Midwest. I'm gonna say the Midwest and um, it's, it basically speaks about all of the things, all of the aspects that make up a typical, like older um, black family who are one generation from uh, racism. I'm sorry, uh, from, uh, I meant slavery. So they're right up and out of slavery. Janie's grandmother was a slave, but her mother wasn't. And so this is the story it tells the story of that dynamic between them and like the path of the tra trajectory she is meant to go on based on the the values morals and beliefs of her of her grandmother who was a former slave so you have to think of all the things that a former slave thinks of when raising up a child and wanting her to go a different type of route than you so Janie's being pushed into situations that she otherwise wouldn't go in if she had the autonomy for herself so to begin with, Janie's being raised by her grandma, her nana, and you're wondering, well, where's her mom? Her mom actually, it doesn't say specifically that her mom has passed on, but her mom is gone. So, um, like Janie, Janie's mother was biracial. And of course, you know how you become biracial when a slave has a baby. So the slave was definitely a product of a rape that, that occurred between, okay. Um, trigger warning for mentioning of rape and abuse and mistreatment. It's not very detailed at all in the book, but it is mentioned. And some of it you're left to imagine on your own, which I like when authors do that. But trigger warning for that because it is in here. But we we all know how it happened or what happened during those times. And so Janie's grandmother had the baby um, and the baby that is was white. She didn't even look mixed. Janie's mother looked like a white woman. So when the field hand noticed this, it, I don't even, because the, the colloquialism is very strong and thick in this book, okay? So I actually will suggest that you have the audio book with you as it was suggested to me in my comment section on my video for the books that I will be reading in February for Black History Month. And I took that advice and I did borrow the audiobook from the library read by Ruby D. And it is, it's giving me all of the feels. It's breaking down all of the language for you. So you're not have to, you're not having to think, am I saying this right? Am I saying this right? Like you're not having to think about that because Ruby D is doing it for you. But I'm still following along because I just have to follow along because if I don't follow along and read it with my own eyes I kind of feel like I haven't read the book I know that's a weird thing to say but that's how I feel personally so anyway yeah so the colloquialism is very thick um and it's meant to be that way it's meant to give you the feels of how African-American sorry let me stop uh, it's meant to give you the feels of how black people spoke during those this time period it's re very real we still kind of do it to this day depending on what person in your life is still available to you? Meaning your grandmother, grandfather, like great greats, they still talk like this. So she was, she had to run away because she was, um, they were gonna sell her baby off and they were gonna kill her. All because she was raped by her master. And so she did get away. I'm talking about Janie's grandmother right now. Janie's grandmother did get away. And she got away far, far, it had to be Midwest or up North because she ended up working for a white family. And um, she worked for the white family 
and then they were having a good life. She was able to save money and all the things. And then all of a sudden, Janie's mother doesn't doesn't come home from school. She gets she gets arred. She gets raped by her professor, by her school teacher, and he hit her in the woods. And um, he ran away, and, and Janie's mother came home. And Janie is a result of a rape. She is a baby of a rape. And from then on, her mom just took to the uh, to to drinking and partying and all the things that happen to you as a result of something being stripped and taken away from you. And in her case, at a very young age, she was 14, I think, 13 or 14 when it happened to her. So Janie came out biracial and yeah, her dad was a rapist and her mom has gone down another path and her grandmother was left raising her and she she did a great job. But at 14 years old, her grandmother decides to send, marry her off to an older man. And that's when you get the story of Janie and her her life. She's telling you her life. Now the book starts off at with Janie coming back home and the neighbors talking about her coming back home. You know how people got some shit to say about you. Somebody always gossiping about you and your life. Always worried about you and your life. That's how the story starts off. But Janie has this one close, close friend that's like, okay, I don't care what none of y'all got to say. This is my friend. Um, I don't, I don't remember her name because she's only mentioned at the beginning. But she's like, this is my friend. My friend's still looking good for her age. She dragging on in the neighborhood. Guess what? She walking up to her house that she owns and this her life. And I'm going to take her some food. So that's how the story starts off. And then Janie goes in talking about this guy named Tea Cake. But I haven't heard about Tea Cake since the beginning of the story. So I'm thinking that's Zora Neale Hurston. Um, is it called exposition? I think it's called exposition when she's about to get ready to take you on the protagonist's journey um, of how she arrived back home at the beginning of the story. So that's what I'm feeling like. We're definitely going back into the past for sure. So she gets married to this old man that owns 200, like, 200 acres of land and it basically is rich by all intents and purposes of that time period. He's a rich man. And um, she starts to learn things about who she is as a woman in this marriage. And uh, she starts to understand that the way the world views things is completely different from her self perception. And she has an epiphany about love and what love is to her. Because what she felt like love was, she learned that that's not what it is to other people by being married to this man. She does not desire him, is what she went home and told her grandmother. He, Yes, he's good to me. Yes, he worships the ground I walk on. Yes, he does X, Y, and Z. He has all the stuff ready for me. I don't have to lift a finger, but, but Nana, I don't desire him. She wants, she wants, she wants to feel desire. She wants to feel love in her soul. And this man is not giving it to her. So then another man comes and you know, they're all struck by Janie's beauty. And it's all mentioned about this long white people hair and just how it, the way that Zora is writing about these characters and um, like the way, the way she is capturing how black people think, especially around this time period is so important. It's really important for my generation and everybody after before to read this book so you can get a clear understanding of where that mess comes from it's it's literally sad because i feel like there wouldn't be any colorism and there wouldn't be any mixing of of of, of your mindsets and, and the way that people are so quick to have um so quick for things like oh she's pretty she's pretty because she's light-skinned you know, sometimes those facial features aren't as pronounced on a lighter skinned woman as they are on a more caramel, more darker skinned woman who has a more striking face and bone structure. But they all, the girls will always get, well, because she likes me and she's beautiful. That's not to say that she's not that pretty, but it's not as exacting. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not as pronounced, but it comes from things like in, being raped as a slave and your child coming out looking like that. You know, all the rapes that occurred and happened back in those time frames. And of course, sometimes now, of course, the mixing of and the intermingling of races on purpose because that is your preference. That's a whole different subject. 
But for me, what I'm trying to say is Zora is writing the story and making you understand where this shit actually comes from and how your mindset needs to kind of shift a little bit as far as the color of people's skin and the way that you think about people who are lighter skinned and who are darker skinned and how they're not better. They're not better or any worse off. They're just human and they're the product of their circumstance. So I really, really like, I really like this book. I knew I would love it. I could have finished it honestly last night, but I just want to savor. It's a short one. It's not even breaking 200 pages. The only reason why it goes in 200 pages is because there's an afterword. So yeah, I'm on the part where she's married to Tony, uh, her husband. A man came through town and basically sweet talked her right on up out of her marriage and she ran off with him and he made it and they went off and, and started a new town and he's a very uh, persuasive sort of guy. Of course he's persuasive if he got her off of her land with her old big belly husband and she ran off with him and became his wife and he founded a new town and he's a big man on campus but he's a mean man and there's still no desire there. So we're still like honing in on um Janie understanding that and she has to go and search for a new perspective and a new meaning a new lease on life I think I think that's where we're headed she's about she's got to be about to leave him I don't know though but I haven't read it there's deep there's a deeper conversation that I do want to have about the novel I'm ge I'm keeping it real surface level because I'm kind of rushing the clip so that I can put this oil on my hair <laughs> so yeah I'll be back with another um so more to say about the book later on. I got to testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day I die, I'm a touch the sky. Got to testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day I die. I'ma touch the sky. Back when they thought pink polos are hurt the rock. Before Cam got the shit to pop, the doors are closed. I felt like bad boy street team. I couldn't work the locks. Now let's go. Take them back to the plan. Me and my mama hopped in that U-Haul van. Any pessimists, I ain't talk to them. Plus, I ain't had no phone in my apartment. Let's take them back to the club. It's about an hour I stand on line. I just wanted to dance. I went to take up an hour after I got my advance. I just wanted to shine. Jay favorite line, dog. And hey, y'all. So, this is me coming back from in the future. I have the beginning of the Zora Neale Hurston vlog. Then I fast forward and started filming that I'm reading Beloved. And then I'm coming back in time to wrap up. <laughs> Zora Neale Hurston. It's been so much going on today. I wasn't able to um, actually come and talk to you guys about. I don't know why my hair look crazy. Uh, I, I haven't come to. I haven't been able to come and um, actually. I'm being so lazy. I'm just. I'm tired. I've worked today, as in worked on um I just, i've done a lot of stuff today basically i'll put it right here um so yeah i did um i filmed my january wrap up today and edited it all that excuse me i just ate um and i started reading beloved and i was like oh in the january wrap up I definitely had strong feelings about Miss Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. So a lot of my feelings did come out in the wrap up as I did finish this book today. So I know it's gonna be a part, you know, it's a part of my Black History Month reading, but I couldn't help but go ahead and just start reading. I have such an ambitious pile, you know, at the most I read six books a month. Um, I can get in eight. But since my career has changed, I should be able to do far more reading than I've ever been able to do besides wintertime, summer break, stuff like that. But um, I just want to go ahead and get a jump start. So let's talk about the book. OK, so here's the thing with their eyes. We're watching God. Um, all right. I liked, like I said in the video, like. I like what Zora 
was is doing here i really enjoyed the storytelling the storytelling is impeccable the prose is impeccable um the attention to detail the colloquialism um the setting the way she talks about florida they're in florida by the way i don't know why i thought it was like the midwest or up north or something like that or the northeast but i finally got it there in florida bits and pieces of miami is sprinkled in um what other parts are mentioned of course there's like a um there's a the town that um jody becomes mayor of i think it's a fictional town in florida but they talk about all the surrounding areas that are real um of course there's a um there's bad weather it's just <sighs> i like the book but it, but it was very it was very hard to read. I'm dancing around the subject, trying to give her accolades first before I talk to you guys about my qualms with the book. So let's get into it. So the last time I talked to you guys, we were talking about just where I thought the character Janie was going. Like remember I was telling you guys, she, of course she has this like older abusive husband or whatever. So I felt like she was gonna leave him. I, it was so, T when TK came into the picture, I totally forgot her first husband's name. So she has two husbands. So her first husband totally forgot his name, way older than her. By the way, Janie's married off at like 14 or 15 years old to this old man, older man. And um, he was nice to her. He took care of her, but it was still very sickening to her to be with him because as I described in my January wrap up, if I could place Janie um, uh, uh, into a Zodiac, she would be a Pisces to me because I'm a Pisces and I know how we can be, how we can be spaced out, airy, airheaded, focused on love versus practicality, very um, optimistic about everything. We are not realist in the least bit. No matter what we go through, we're looking for the fairy tale. And that reminds me of Janie's character so much. And so that was where, that's where Janie gets stuck at thinking things are going to be one way instead of being realistic about stuff so her main her her main issue at or her main issue in each of her relationships before we get to the character of tea cake is that these men are nothing like she feels she's supposed to be with you know they don't tickle her fancy they don't make her happy she's grossed out by them um well by her first husband then her second husband jody comes along takes her away from her first husband and at first he's this amazing guy just someone fun coming along different from what she's used to and then he sets in marries her and basically he sets in and starts to behave just like her first husband, pretty much. He's the big man in the city. You know, he comes in, saves the day, turns to the mayor, gets all of these finances and money. But he does a good job at leading everyone, but he does not do, do a good job of being a partner. And so he's not good to, to Jody. He's abusive to her mentally, emotionally, physically, but not too, too bad. You know what I mean? It's not described as he's just like this, this hound dog beating on her, but he's not nice to her. And so she sticks with him for 20 or so years and the book talks about their relationship and my favorite parts are definitely the conversations that the townspeople are having with one another and how they view Janie and how Janie listens and laughs and acts like she's not listening to them and those are my favorite parts of the book for sure and then we get the character of tea cake so her husband Jody passes away of old age liver failure stuff like that and the subject of Jane, Janie's age comes up and so she's like 39 years old, which is not old, but she is still described as one of the most beautiful people everyone has ever seen, even at the age of 39. And Tea Cake is younger than her, I think like 12 years younger than her or something like that. And um, they fall in love. And I still can't. The reason why this book was difficult is because 
you know, I was looking for some sort of silver lining. I was looking for some sort of romance that can stand the test of time. I feel like through all of the heartache and pain that Janie went through, when tea cake came along, I definitely thought that Janie was gonna like find, have this, the, this great love, which in her eyes she did, but I just don't know what Zora is is I don't know where Zora's mindset was when she wrote this because Tea Cake was still not the best person. He gambled, he stole her money and gambled. He hit her too, slapped her around because he was jealous of her. Um, I don't know, but still in Janie's eyes, you know, she he was the great love of her life. And so this book, <sighs> It, it's flawed and it, it, it's so many nuances to things. And so, like I said in my January wrap up, I enjoyed the conversation around colorism, which is the difference of treatment of a black person based on the color of their skin within the black community. It's not racism, it's colorism. And of course, Janie is mixed race. Like I told you guys earlier, she is the product of a rape. Her mom's school teacher raped her when her mom was 14 years old. And um, that's why her grandmother raised her because her mom went down the wrong path. Um, and so of course, Janie's light skin um, with beautiful long, described as like white people hair. So I like that conversation and I like the way that Zora framed it and made it like a juxtaposition because it's always like that lighter skinned people really love dark skinned people and then dark skinned people really love light skinned people and so she portrays that very well even the ones that are fixated on their skin tone and um trying to like make it make them like like a, make light skinned people are just some light skinned people in this novel are described as trying to kind of make their own race that's where you get that mythical town of mallard that's in um the vanishing half you know the twins from the vanishing half lived in this mythical town where everybody was mulatto so you had those type of people too that's trying to preserve their skin tone those are black people but because they kept um procreating with the same type of color they were preserving their skin tone and so she has characters like that in this novel also that frowned upon dark-skinned black people and would never even be seen in the light of day with dark-skinned people but then Janie was not like that like I said Janie favored her darker skin counterparts and she felt like they were the most beautiful and most attractive so i do enjoy that because that all in all is the truth within the black community but there's still a huge topic of it even now in 2024 remember i like to ref refer to classics as why they're called classics because a lot of times classics um can be thrown right into modern day uh, modern classics and, and it's still like having it's like ha still having the same conversation but in today's time uh, so I did enjoy that but the love story it was not good to me like first of all the story the the novel is a five star for sure the writing the storytelling everything five star but I'm still very critical of Zora Neale Hurston's voice or her tone in this novel I didn't really enjoy it and leaving or finishing the novel i'm i'm still i still don't understand kind of what i'm supposed to take from this because i didn't like tea cake either and tea cake was the great love of her life all three men in her life were terrible to me they were all bad they were all terrible none of them were ever really good to her yes tk came in and showed her a different way of living you know he took her places outside of just being in the shop or cooking in the kitchen or washing the clothes he wanted he wanted Janie with him everywhere. He took her out. They, she enjoyed her life with him, but it still reeks of misogyny to me. And I also have to think, okay, back when this was written, like I said, it was published in 1937. So Zora Neale Hurston's life, I don't know. I don't know what her personal preferences were as far as her dating is concerned, because I know a lot of the writers in the 
uh, Harlem Renaissance were homos. Like, they were real homosexuals. You know what I'm saying? They were rebellious. Um, for example, the woman who wrote A Raisin in the, in the Sun, I can't think of her name, but she was lesbian. And I thought that that was so cool to know that back then because you had this whole stigma that, oh my gosh, women were not like that back then or when i was a child i would never have thought of something like that but to grow up and become a teenager and i'm and a young adult and know that wow you know they were had to be secretive about it but they were living their life so i don't know what zora neale's preference was i have not researched her yet but because of when this was written is what i'm what i'm trying to say is I have to contribute the way that this story is written and the ending and everything like that to the times in which it was written and the mindset of the author. That's what I'm trying to say, because I don't agree with the choices in men that Janie had. But then you also could contribute that to being of Janie being a product of her circumstances, if we're thinking critical. And all she has ever known was to accept certain things from men because of her grandmother and her grandmother saying, you know, talking to her about security and all that stuff. And you have to be secure in this life. You're not going to have anybody else. Excuse me. But by the time Janie's second husband died, he had left her with a lot of money because he, you know, he was basically the mayor of the town, basically owned the town. So she really didn't need tea cake. And so I'm just I'm just still trying to figure out why she still accepted tons a lot lots of things from him that she didn't have to. And so I feel like I'm rambling and going on and on in a circle now. So I'm done. I'm done talking about their eyes with watching God. It's still a five star read, however, I did not like any of the men in this story. I was really trying to be like, okay, I cannot, I cannot wait till she finds love in her life. I cannot wait till she gets that love and then maybe have a wonderful like little sex scene <laughs> and like experience like, and she did experience all those things that she was yearning for in the beginning, but it still was not satisfying for me. And it had to be because this was written in 1937. Um, I didn't love the ending. I didn't love it. I didn't love it, but I love the writing. I was, the writing is infectious. I like the writing a lot. I love the way that she wrote black people from the 19th century, um, 20th, early. I guess it's late 19th, early 20th century characters. I loved it. But yeah, it, it was just okay, the ending. Five stars still. And so yeah, I'll, See you guys in the next clip, next clip after the next clip. You're gonna see this top part of this outfit in the next clip because I do read Beloved in this vlog as well and I introduced Beloved, Beloved next. I felt like it was necessary to put two books together here because this, there's only two Their Eyes Are Watching God clips. So yeah, that's it on Their Eyes Are Watching God. So I'll be back to talk to you guys about Beloved soon. All right. What is up vlog? Uh, it's me popping in. Um, I do these quite often, but it is what it is, right? It's real time diamond. So I'm popping in to let you guys know that I do not go forward with beloved in this vlog as I feel like my beloved clips are very detailed and in depth per usual. And I don't want to gloss. I don't want you to gloss over the video because it's too long. So we just end the vlog off here. I just stopped it here as far as um, their eyes were watching God. Even though you hear me reference Beloved being in this vlog, it's not gonna be in this vlog. It's gonna be a completely separate vlog. It's gonna go up. So I just want to pop in and just say that and go ahead and close out the vlog and say thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the things. And I'll see you guys in the comments and in the next upload. Deuces.